This video has the potential to either be really short or painfully long. Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I really need a new intro. Um, so today, as I mentioned before, I really wanted to uh, go over my setup, what I use for streaming. I'm not going to get in too much detail on how to actually set up a stream. There's plenty of more knowledgeable people on YouTube for that sort of thing because I had a lot of help if it wasn't for my best friend Cody, I would have been mad fucked. But this is kind of a follow-up to my unboxing my streaming gear. I got a couple more things since then, and I just wanted to show you where I have everything placed, why I have it there, what I have set up, um, what I used. I'll get into a little bit of detail when it comes to, like, the computer and why I chose the one I did and things like that. Um, and then we're just gonna give, like, an overall little desk tour, so I'm not gonna be in the frame because I'm gonna have to hold up the camera and show you stuff. So, um, I will catch you on the flippity flop. Okay, to start, um, this is just the, uh, section where, this is just where my MacBook is. Um, at this point, all I'm using my MacBook for is, like, editing my videos and stuff because when it comes to things of that nature, uh, Mac is really good for video editing. You know, you have like Final Cut and iMovie and things like that. I just use iMovie since I'm a broke ass bitch and I have 800 subscribers. Why would I use anything else? And then I just have like this cute little gaming mouse. It lights up and stuff. Let's see if we can get it to light up. No, oh, I can't open this with one hand. Oh, look, there he goes. Super cute. Um, so this is actually a gaming mouse, so you would think that's what I use for my gaming. But actually, the one I use for um, every day and for my gaming is just, it's a little uh, Logitech wireless mouse. Super easy. I got it mainly because I wanted a pink mouse to match everything else I have on my desk. Look at my little Madoka. She's so cute. Um, keyboard. So the keyboard I got is this Razer keyboard and I got it because if you watch my unboxing, you know I got the headset in the docking station for that. Um, so I was going with that pink Razer theme. So I bought this keyboard. It's really nice because it came with this little rest. Which, even though this rest is plastic, it still makes the world a difference. Especially if I'm, like, you know, playing, like, Among Us or something, you know, and I'm on the keyboard constantly. Because the angle you are at, otherwise, I mean, that's not going to be comfortable for an extended period of time. What is up with my ring? So, the little rest does make a difference. It's a lot more ergonomic, I guess. And then the wireless mouse just comes in handy because, I mean... It's wireless, duh. Like, I fucking hate, I hate you. I hate you. Oh, look, she knows I'm talking about her. Can't stand that bitch. Next thing I would recommend is getting, oh, so sorry. Got my vape in the way. Let me move all this shit. So I did get a big gaming mouse pad. Um, it has my wife on it. Love her. These mouse pads, I didn't realize it was going to be like that big of one because it's literally like half my body size. But um, these are really nice. And a lot of people when they are, let me see if I can flip the camera around while I talk to you. I feel like it's going to be a little less rude that way. So a lot of people um, when they come in to, I'm a bad camera person. This is why I don't vlog. A lot of people, um, because as you may or may not know, I work at Best Buy, so I sell this kind of stuff, like, all day. And a lot of people, they come in looking for a mouse, and they want a gaming mouse, because that's, you know, they come in for gaming. They want gaming keyboard, gaming this, gaming that, and they don't really know the differences and, like, what's necessary, so they want a mouse pad. When you ask me for a gaming mouse pad, I'm going to assume you want one of these big mouse pads that, you know, you have plenty of room on and your keyboard sets on top of it and and then I show them these mouse pads that are like three foot long and they're like, no, I want something smaller than that. That like larger size is part of what makes it a gaming mouse pad. The reason you have a mouse pad this big is because... I mean, when you're messing around playing games, I found even, like, when I am, even when I'm, like, editing and stuff, you know how it is. You start right here, and this is where you are, and then as you're working, you end up over here, or you end up down here, just gradual movements. You're kind of slip sliding all over the place. And that's the point of these bigger mouse pads, is it does give you that room to mess with, and you have this big area, and you don't have to worry about getting off track or, like, 
you know, the laser not catching and things being weird. So that's why I would recommend a gaming mouse pad over just a regular mouse pad. Because if you're playing a game and you're getting really into it, or even if you are just editing a video or something, you know, you don't have to worry about getting off track. You have all this space to deal with. And plus, it just looks fucking cool as shit, man. Look at this aesthetic ass. Look at this bitch. I fucking love her. This is beautiful. This is amazing. So next, I guess, would be the keyboard. And I often get asked, like, why a gaming keyboard versus a regular keyboard? And, of course, you know your girl had to go and get the pink keyboard that looks super cute and matches everything. Um, so number one would be... The Click. It is so clicky. Now, the click is a matter of personal preference for a lot of people because if you ask other streamers and things, you will get very um, mixed reviews on that. So some people say they love the click. It's very satisfying uh, when someone's playing a game and they're watching the stream and they're like, I love listening to the click. It's super satisfying, super fun and fresh and everything I ever dreamed of. Now on the flippity flop, you'll have people that are like, okay, I fucking hate that click. It's so goddamn annoying. Um, which sometimes I would have to agree with it. I'm used to it now and I love doing it myself, but like, <laughs> I zoomed. But if I am um, back in the bedroom and I'm like trying to sleep, and that's where Steven's setup is, is he's back there in the bedroom. Um, but when I'm trying to sleep and he's over there like, and I'm like, could you shut the fuck up, please? Like, people are trying to sleep in here. So I, I've i seen, um, like, both sides of it. Like, it's fun for me, but it's not always fun to listen to. So in that case, I would just say, like, know your audience. You know, if you think it's going to tick a lot of people off. Or um, actually, just do whatever the fuck you want. Get whatever keyboard you want. To hell with anybody that doesn't want to listen to it. If they don't want to be there, then they don't want to be there. There's really nothing you can do about that. Um, another factor when it comes to the gaming keyboards is obviously you have all the lights. Most regular keyboards that aren't gaming keyboards. In fact, I would go as far to say that no regular keyboard is really going to light up like this. I mean, I'm sure you can find something, but anything that has lights like this is generally going to be marketed as a gaming keyboard. And again, as far as like the... Um, the click and all that, whatever you call it. Not every gaming keyboard is going to be made that way. So this like kind of stuff isn't all you're going to get with a gaming keyboard. That's just how some of them are made. You have plenty of gaming keyboards that are just perfectly normal, quiet keyboards, but they still have the fun lights. They have the controls. They have everything you need, which brings us to things like this. Like I have this little button. Don't remember what it does. I think I have to program it to do something. Uh, I have this, which is my volume control. You can see that there. So that's really easy and convenient um, when I am playing games on my computer. I can just do that. I mean, nine times out of ten, I'm going to have my headset plugged in. And I'm going to be using the volume control on that. But when I'm just sitting here watching YouTube and stuff, I mean, it's really convenient. As opposed to, I would have to go up to my monitor and turn it up on the back or... Uh, the speaker I'm using for it currently, which is really cool, like a uh, vintage antique looking radio, but it's just a Bluetooth speaker. But, um, you know, I could turn the volume, but I'm fucking lazy. If I'm sitting back here, it's a lot easier to just go like that than to like reach over and get my speaker. It's just a matter of convenience, you know? So with that, um, let's just go ahead and move on to, sorry, I'm such a bad camera person. Um, moving on to my computer. Let's set this down for a second because like I feel like we need to talk. Okay, that fell. When I tell you guys I tried, believe me, I tried absolutely everything I could to make this MacBook work. I, I got it there. I did one stream with it. Um, when it came to the gaming aspect, it's just flat out, it's, it's not there. Now, that's not to say that, like, no MacBook will work because, I mean, I watched a video of a girl that straight up had a 2015 MacBook Pro and she does it through her Switch and stuff like that. She does use a different capture card and the capture card probably is one of the larger factors 
in this situation, but we'll get into that. Um, I tried to use a MacBook, but it was not meant to be. Later on, I found out that my Elgato, which is my capture card, it was just a little too old. I was on an HD60, which was the absolute best capture card money could buy, like, eight years ago. <laughs> So, um, I had that, and then I had to upgrade to the HD60S, um, especially since I was streaming with my Switch, because that was, like, one of the first capture cards that had the ability to, um, capture gameplay from the Nintendo Switch. So I've heard from tech YouTubers that I trust, so I'm just gonna assume that's the case. But the main problem with the MacBook is, um, depending on what you use. Now, this is all, this is gonna get really boring if you don't care about, like, the guts of, like, technology. But, um, depending on what kind of equipment you plan on using, you really need to pay attention to compatibility. Now, when it comes to streaming from the Mac, most of all the programs you're gonna run into and things like the capture card and just your systems in general, um, it's all very new for the Mac, you know? Not a lot of people are gaming and streaming and stuff on any type of Mac, whether it be uh, the laptop or the desktop or whatever. So a lot of these programs, like the programs you're going to use to set up and run your stream, uh, they're not really made for Mac. There are ones that are Mac specific now that just came out, but a lot of it, when you get down into it, it's really a bunch of workarounds, you know, you're going to have to go through a lot more effort, download a lot more sources and programs in order to use, like, OBS or Streamlabs OBS. Even though, if you go to those websites, it gives you the link to download for Mac. That's not all you're going to need. You're going to need to download all this other shit to get that to run it. So it really doesn't make sense to try and put that much effort into it just to use your Mac. Especially since Macs tend to have like lower storage than what you're going to find on a normal PC or a gaming PC. Now of course that can be fixed with external hard drives or if you want to shell out an extra grand to get more storage on your hard drive. Uh, but that's again just a whole different thing. Like you might as well shell out the money and get you a PC that you're not going to have to worry about uh, as opposed to just hoping and praying that your Mac works, like doing all these workarounds. My problem specifically with my Mac and why I found out it didn't work because the first stream I did that was on my Mac, I was in just chatting. So there was no gameplay. It was just me sitting here doing what I'm doing now, being incredibly boring. So um, when I streamed from the Mac, it was fine. I just used the uh, beta of the the Twitch lab that they're doing, where they call it Twitch Studio. So Twitch just started creating their own like free stream program. Because it's not like you just go to Twitch and hit go live. It's This isn't you now or Instagram. Like you have to have a program to send you to Twitch. We'll get into that later. My Mac for that purpose, like if that's all I was doing, if I was doing no gameplay whatsoever, it would have been absolutely fine. So um, if that's what you want to do, if you want to just do something on Twitch that does not involve any type of gameplay, 100% you can use the MacBook you already have. It's going to be fine. No issues there. Um, my issue was I, I do want to do some gameplay. Maybe not entirely, but, you know, at least every now and then. So the capture card that I was using, even though I still had to upgrade, but in general, the capture card I was using, the, uh, software, because when you have an Elgato capture card, you have to download the Elgato software to kind of get it started. Like, it kind of, like, activates it. Now, the Elgato software you can use that as your streaming program. You can stream through the Elgato software, but I prefer Streamlabs, um, but we'll talk about that. So um, my problem was the Elgato itself, the Elgato software that is like a mandatory download, it requires at least a quad-core, um, a quad-core i5, for your processor. Now I did hear that if you have like an i3 that has four cores, that's fine. Um, I didn't even know like i3s could, but I don't know. I'm not the computer person. I know enough to get by, but I'm not like, uh, 
Um, so yeah, so turns out, and I didn't even know because Steven told me like, oh, there's no such thing as a dual core i5. And I'm like, okay, I trust you. No, <laughs> it's a thing, trust me. So I thought like, okay, I didn't think that whether it was dual core or quad core did matter. I thought it was just the fact that it had to be at least a later processor. So I thought I just needed it to be an i5 and I'm good. And I started to get worried because I'm like, I think this one's an i3, but it's not. It's an i5, but the Elgato requires at least four cores to your computer's processor in order to manage everything it needs to do. So that's when I had to be like, all right, fuck it. I don't have a choice. I have to get a PC. And if all that processor talk meant absolutely nothing to you, I understand. Because <laughs> it just, but even, you don't have to know anything about processors. All you need to know how to do is to find out what processor your computer has if you don't already know. Um, for Mac, that would be just in your, like, about this Mac, whatever. You'll find it in there somewhere. Uh, on a PC, I don't know, let me look real quick. Okay, for PC, um, I assume it's the same for all of those, too. So, it'll be in your system or control panel, system, insecurity, then system, whatever. Just get to your, like, about this PC, like, about computer. Um, so similar to the Mac, but it's in there and that'll tell you exactly what processor, what processor you have, whether it's Intel or what's the other one, Ryzen, AMD, you know what I mean. So it'll tell you what processor you have and like all that good stuff. So, and I think there's other ways you can really dig deeper into the settings. Um, but I haven't used the PC in like several years before I had to finally get this one. So like, I'm not... If you don't use it, you lose it kind of thing. So yeah, now, had I used a different capture card, could I have still used the MacBook? Maybe. But I'm glad I got this anyways because I really do like it and I like my setup this way. And it's just been, like, a lot easier than all these workarounds with the Mac. Yeah, like, I, I tried. I wanted to be that one person that came to YouTube and been like, my stream setup, I use this MacBook and a Switch and, like, It'd be easy because I know there's not a lot of that out there because I searched for it to see if I could do it. And I wanted to be like someone that actually came and did it. But it just, it really can't be done. I mean, it can, but it's just not worth the hassle. Um, so the computer that I got, I just have this little, um, this gaming laptop here. It's an MSI. Um, it's a little bit older, so it doesn't have, like, the latest and greatest graphics card or anything, which isn't a big deal for me because I'm not playing, like, super intensive games. Um, I'm just doing, like, Among Us and Genshin Impact and, like, stuff like that. Like, it's not that deep. So, um, if I were, like, a more hardcore gamer, then, yeah, maybe I would have looked for something better. But I bought this off of a Facebook Marketplace. So, we went and met the kid, and um, he sold it to us for, like, $350, which is really good. Like, $350 for a gaming laptop at all, like, off the bat, is amazing. Because these ones, especially, like, these MSIs, they get expensive. Like, this is chunky. Uh, gaming laptops can run almost as much as, sometimes even more, than what an actual tower would run you or like building your own pc it can be just as expensive um so that's why it's a laptop um i'd like to actually get a tower later on but for now this was a solution that was quick and in my price range so that's why i went with this but it's a really good little laptop like no complaints whatsoever i mean i say little laptop it's like beefy it's freaking huge but it has plenty of, like, USB ports, HDMI, uh, even has VGA, which I'll never use. Um, it does everything I need. It runs the stream smoothly. Like, it, it I don't know, uses, like, 10% of my CPU when I'm, like, doing all this shit at once. Like, it's amazing. So, I have no complaints there. I mean, as long as... Again, you get something that's going to be able to handle whatever you're doing. Um, this laptop, I just recently started, like, downloading games onto it. I did not buy it with the intention of actually gaming, because when you get into, like, actual gaming, you do want to make sure you have something powerful that can handle it. This, of course, is going to handle anything I run on it, because, again, 
it's not that deep. But um, I bought it just to be like a pass-through for my streaming, you know, because mostly I'm streaming on my Switch. All my games are on my Switch. So I knew there was going to be no problem there with that guy. Um, but it, I mean, it's going to handle a lot more than I'm putting it through. All, all my streams like that I've done since I got this, I'm not dropping any frames. Uh, a lot of that has to do because I got a new modem and router. So that's another thing I should talk about. If you don't have like good equipment when it comes to your internet connection, that's going to like make the world a difference. Like you can have all the best computers and graphics card. You can have all the best shit in the world. But if you have a 10 year old modem router combo, your stream is still going to be ass. There's the, the, the quality stream starts with your internet connection. So make sure you check your equipment. Don't use a modem and router combo unit spend a little bit of cash and go get a new modem and get you like a Netgear Nighthawk or some shit. Like get something quality and it's gonna help you so so much. So yeah, got this gaming laptop. Um, I set up my dual monitor system here and that I will like very briefly go over with you because everyone acts like it's so complicated and it's literally the easiest shit. There's that monitor I got. Um, so all you do, all you need to set up dual monitors, I mean, depending on what kind of monitors you have, but generally, all you need is an HDMI cord. Literally take an HDMI cord. Now, it doesn't matter if it's coming from a laptop or another monitor. Run an HDMI cord, hook them together with that HDMI cord, and you're done. Like, the screen automatically pops up. And then what you're going to do is so whichever one you want, or it doesn't really matter, right-click. Shit. I'm watching the camera as I'm doing this. Display settings. It pops up over here because this is the one the computer is attached to. And then you just click whichever one you want. I make this one my main display, but we'll do this one for now since the other one's set to main. So this is monitor one over here, obviously. Make this my main display. Bam. See how everything's over there? Now nothing's over here but I'm going to go ahead and switch it back. I know this isn't ideal for you to see. Like, I could have screen recorded this, but I'm not going to do it. Now watch. I'm going to hit main, make this my main display. All that's over there. Bam. Back over here. That's literally all you do. You don't even have to do that. If you want that to be your main display, like, whichever one, I mean, it'll work. Literally all you need is that HDMI cord. Like, it's automatically going to recognize that you have two monitors plugged in. So, pro tip for you. I know a lot of people come into my store confused because they don't know what to do. And I'm like, it's literally the easiest thing ever. Okay, that's fine. Um, what else? When choosing a monitor for your setup, just make sure you know what you need and what you're looking for. So, mine has... Uh, one HDMI input, um, it does have a headphone jack, which I highly recommend, like you really want to make sure your monitor has a headphone jack, that way you can plug in headphones, because say I'm playing on my Switch, and I want to hear the game, if I plug the headphones into the Switch, then I'm, I'm going to be taking in all the sound, and the sound's not going to pass through the Elgato, and then the people watching the stream aren't going to be able to hear the game and um you know the depending on the game that can entirely kill it maybe it's not a big deal but you just want to make sure your monitor or your tv whatever you're playing on does have that uh headphone jack which most tvs are tv versus monitor that's really just personal preference gaming monitors a lot of the things about those is like maybe it has like a higher refresh rate it might have that curvature in the screen for more immersion um it might be uh have like the glare reduction on the screen so that's not really a big deal to me i think gaming monitors are sometimes overpriced and kind of ugly so i just got a regular curved monitor for like $150. Not that big a deal. But if you just have like some TVs, like Steven has two, I think they're like 32 inch TVs and that's what he uses for his dual monitors. Um, and it, it, you know, it works fine. Just like whatever works. It's really not that big a deal. But I do recommend that when you are streaming, you do have a, at least a dual monitor set up because um, you could definitely do it without, I guess. Like, but I, I don't, 
I just really don't know how that would work, honestly. I know some people like to use a tablet to pull up their chat and things like that. But, I mean, it's just going to make your life easier because all you do is... So, when I open Streamlabs, all you have to do... Well, i got to wait for it to open up. Okay, there we go. So, all you do is click and drag this guy over here. And then that's where I'll have my stream pulled up. And then I'm playing whatever game over here. Because I, you want to be able to not just keep an eye on your chat because... If you notice, I have this little um, wireless charger dock for my phone right here. So um, this I can see a little better. So I'll usually set my phone on here, have my chat pulled up on my phone. So I can keep an eye on it because it's kind of hard to see it all the way over here. Um, but you want to pay attention to like your volume and things like that. Like you want to make sure you're not screaming into the mic too much or like the game audio isn't paused or anything crazy like that um so you do want to keep an eye on that you want to make sure you're in the shot and like your camera is not like you know whatever so yeah you just want to keep an eye on that and then always have your chat pulled up keep an eye on your chat because people might be telling you things and you know letting you know like Hey, we can't hear you. Hey, your camera's off. Things like that. So you you just really want to pay attention to that. Plus, those people love and support you. So you just really want to pay attention to them. Like, I know sometimes we get into the game, but be sure to give your audience some love as well. And then when it comes to lighting, um, that was the easiest part. So uh, that, again, is preference. What I use is I just used to have this at my makeup table. We come around here. I just have this little like ring light. I'm not gonna, yeah, it's pretty bright. But I have this little um, ring light. I got it from Walmart. It's just like a little vlogging ring light thing. It has a phone stand here. So I guess I could use that to set my phone on too, but it usually needs charge. So I set it on that dock. Um, but yeah, it clips to the desk. So that makes it really convenient because I just have it clipped here and I can move it wherever. I'm usually going to set it behind the camera like this when I stream. And then even like when I turn the lights off, you know, it's still bright enough that like you can see me here. It's pretty nice. Gives like a good vibe to it. And then there's my mess of cords. You can see my capture card. Now when I switch back and forth between playing on my Switch versus like playing a game on my PC, um, I have it set to where all I have to do is... I just switch out this HDMI cord right here. So right now my computer's plugged in. As soon as I pull it out, it's gonna kill those dual monitors. And then this is the HDMI cord for my Switch and I just have to switch that out. Cause I'm like, that's, this side's attached to the TV and then whatever game, you know, you're playing has to pass through the Elgato. This is what sends it to the computer. Um, so yeah, this is just, Whatever device you're using needs attached here. So I just kind of have that laying there because it's easy for me to remember because I'm like, this is a mess of cords. I don't want to have to go through. For my webcam, sorry, I hit the vape. For my webcam, um, this is a Logitech. Oh, sorry. That light's prohibiting any of this. But this is a Logitech webcam. I cannot tell you um, what its retail price is. Again, with like the secondhand things, much my like my laptop, sometimes if something's a good opportunity and like within my budget, convenient, like, I mean, why not? You don't have to pay all this money for brand new equipment. You know, if it works, it works. You know what I mean? You, whatever you have might be fine now. If I wanted to, I could use the webcam on this laptop, you know? I could use the webcam on my MacBook. I mean, it's shit. I wouldn't recommend that, depending on what kind of MacBook you have. I think they're all kind of shitty. But, um, so this is a webcam, uh, we got from a friend and I just paid him $20 for it. We called it even. So amazing because especially right now, everybody is doing this shit. Everybody's taking Zoom calls, streaming, like everybody's working from home. Everybody needs webcams. So they are hard to find right now. And the ones that you do find are being marked up. So, um, I would recommend trying to start off utilizing what you already have because it's hard out here for a bitch. Um, next would be my mic. So I, um, microphones can be controversial. <laughs> so I am using a blue snowball. It has a different stand. I have it mounted on this arm that Steven happened to have, which I would recommend, um, depending on whatever you have, 
um, whatever mic you may use or whatever, if you can get an arm like this, sorry, I'm trying to show, I'm such a bad person. If you can get an arm like this, it is going to make your life easier because depending on where I am and where I'm sitting, you know, if I'm more leaned back in my chair, I want to make sure it's still picking up my voice so I can like move it closer or like if I'm sitting up here and like getting really into things, who knows what fell? I have no idea. Um, you know, I can push it back, push it where I need it. Um, so that was nice. So this was an arm that just came with like, Steven got these microphones that ended up not being that great because, I mean, he just wanted to try some stuff out and um, it was pretty cheap. But most microphones are going to be able to attach to something like this. It's a pretty universal thing. Um, obviously, it's like upside down, but like that really makes no difference. I like my snowball. I don't think it's terrible by any means. Now, obviously, it's not going to be the absolute highest quality audio, but it doesn't sound bad. Like, this is a microphone that I use in my voiceover videos, and you know how those sound. Like, it's genuinely not the worst. So, that works. The next step up would be the Yeti, and I do know they make um, an arm specifically for that. But yeah, like I said, whatever works, works. I mean, even if you have like a gaming headset like this, you know, most of these have mics. You can use that built-in mic if you have to. Um, Razer, not gonna lie to you, is notorious for having shitty mics. I used one, um, well, I used the mic in this for a recent voiceover video, and again, it was okay. Like, it actually wasn't the absolute worst thing in the world. Now, maybe because I don't know what high-quality audio sounds like, maybe I just, I don't know the difference, so to me, it's fine, but it's not like I'm getting outward complaints that my audio is so terrible, people can't bear to watch. Normally, any kind of complaint I get like that is just because I'm terrible in general. So, yeah, like I said, utilize what you have, man. You don't have to buy all kinds of shit like this we've had laying around the house for years. We just had that in the closet, got that from a friend, got... The ring light from Walmart. Pick this up from some college kid. You know, it's it's whatever, man. Not that deep. If it works, it works. Because you will hear a million times over. The most important part is just, like, having fun and stuff. Like, when you start out, it's not like people are automatically going to flock to your channel. It's not like everyone and their grandmother is going to be there supporting you. It sucks, but it is what it is, you know, same as YouTube. It takes time to accumulate that. So it kind of sucks if you, like, spend all this money buying all the absolute best equipment and then, like, maybe it doesn't work out or maybe you don't enjoy it as much as you thought you would because it is an entirely different world, especially if you're like me and you've been on YouTube for so long. It's so different. Um, I feel like it kind of works out because I never shut the fuck up and I love to talk, so it's great to just get on there and be able to talk throughout the whole thing, which is also why I haven't done as many, like, talking YouTube videos lately because, like, my voice gets exhausted from not shutting the fuck up for four and a half hours about how I spent a decade learning all the Minecraft recipes and now you don't have to have them memorized anymore. That's bullshit. But that's beside the point. Um, yeah, so if, if you like something because it's cute, fuck it, buy it. You know, if you are going to use this shitty microphone because you found it at your dad's house, like, who cares, man? Like, as long as you're there and you're consistent and you're having a good time and you're not going into it thinking you're about to make all this money when realistically it takes a lot to be able to start making money on Twitch. Yeah, just fucking do your thing, dude. Um, other stuff I got is I just got, like, a wireless controller. Or just having controllers in general. Now, I didn't know this until recently, but Steam, you can actually go into the settings and you can use, like, a Nintendo Switch controller or an Xbox controller or whatever for whatever game that is compatible for a controller, of course. So that's pretty cool. Um, I can use this one on it. I can't, the Bluetooth is not going to work to a computer. It's, that aspect is strictly to a switch. But the charging cord it comes with, it's a USB type C to USB A, which is regular USB. Um, if I plug it in, I can still use it just like I could this one right here that's actually wired. I just have it unplugged, but this one's wired. 
Um, so that's something handy to know. So if you like have a Switch controller and you want to do some PC gaming, I mean, that's an option too. And then finally, why I use Streamlabs OBS over uh, regular OBS or any type of free uh, streaming software system. I, I just think it's easy. You know, like I fooled around with OBS a little bit before I got everything figured out. Like I tried the Twitch Lab beta, which was great for just chatting. I still have no idea how or if you're even capable of using it for gameplay. Um, but I would just use Streamlabs because everything's right there. You can control like your layout and you can see like some of your analytics. Um, you can see like you can do whatever man like every time right before I stream I run the auto optimizer on it and it'll like make sure my settings are set to like the best of what they can be for my internet connection and for my equipment and stuff so that's handy I'm sure the other programs have something like that I'm not 100% because I haven't really used them but just for opening up a program and like at first glance I would recommend Streamlabs just because off the bat it just looked so much simpler to use than like the regular OBS or like whatever you know um but that all is a matter of personal preference you might like something more um but I know Streamlabs is pretty popular so that's why I would recommend it it's pretty familiar. Another thing I would look into is when it comes to equipment you choose, if you do choose something that's like more popular, there's a lot more familiarity. Um, it's going to be a lot easier to do troubleshooting and to find help online. Uh, I use my Elgato capture card. That is a very expensive capture card. I know there are cheaper alternatives out there that are going to do what I need to do, but I'm always going to go with Elgato. One, because I'm familiar. I know it's a good product. And two, there are endless tutorials out there for setting up a stream with an Elgato, especially to the Switch, because again, the HD60S is like the main capture card for streaming with the Nintendo Switch. So if you think about that, like if you go with something that is more popular, it's just going to make it a lot easier if you get stuck or you get in a bind or you don't know what the fuck you're doing. You know, I, I'm going to find a lot more information that way. So same with like using something like, I mean, you're actually going to find more info about the regular OBS than Streamlabs OBS, but Streamlabs is kind of growing more in popularity, so it's easy to figure stuff out that way. There are a lot of specific tutorials between like, you know, streaming with a Nintendo Switch using an Elgato capture card on Streamlabs OBS. Like the more um, common all these things are, the easier it's going to be to find your specifics of what information you're looking for when you're looking online you know like if you're coming in if you're like me luckily like I said I had one friend that could help but for the most part I did all this stuff myself I had to do all my own research to figure this out and when I was doing it trying to do it on a macbook with like a fucking 10 year old capture card obviously it was a lot harder you know it was harder to find that info because Nobody out there is doing that. No shame in the game if you're getting, like, common product. Like, don't try to be different <laughs> if you don't have to. Like, every other aspect, yes, be different. But when it comes to this stuff, use equipment that you know and that other people know. And you're going to be able to find a lot more information that way. Case in point, why I have a bunch of Razer stuff. Because I'm familiar with it. I know the reviews on it. I deal with it every day. So it didn't make sense to go out and buy something else. Like, it's here. I know it. It's convenient. So, sorry that was all very long-winded. This is a very um, long-winded video. Just a lot of information thrown at you at once. I know it's pretty boring if you have no interest in this. Maybe you just wanted to see all the stuff on my desk. Very sorry about that. My little shelf right there. So I guess that's really all you need. We went over the mic. Yeah, there's really not a lot to it. It's just a matter of making sure you have all the correct compatibility with the items that you choose. And that's really it. Again, if you need more information about how to set up streams and things like that, go to your YouTube search bar. I'm not going to be super helpful with that kind of information. I know enough based on what I did, but I'm no pro. But thank you so much for watching today's horribly filmed video. Um, I am not 
a cameraman, obviously. Uh, this, you guys ask for vlogs. This is what you're going to get with a vlog. It's going to be a bunch of this. Like, for 20 fucking minutes. That will give you a headache. Okay, I guess I'm going to go now and get ready to stream. So, uh, if you haven't joined in any of my streams, um, maybe check it out. We've been having fun. It's been a good time. I do talk a lot, so be prepared for that. I feel like, I mean, you could always just turn me on in the background while you, like, do stuff. I like to do that with streamers. You know, just, it makes me feel like I have a friend, which I don't, but it makes me feel like I do. And, uh, yeah, so my channel is going to be linked in the description. Obviously, why would I not? This is my channel. Um, everyone that has joined in on my streams or followed me, on Twitch or anything like that. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. Like, I just feel, feel like I'm doing pretty okay so far, you know? Like, I know Twitch is a much harder platform to gain traction on. You have to really, really like a person. Like, it's easy to watch somebody for 10 minutes on YouTube once a week. It's a lot harder to sit there and pretty much be in the room with them for several hours at a time. Like, you really have to enjoy somebody. So, the fact that any of you have been there, that's really fucking cool. Thank you so much. And uh, to everyone here, because I've gotten a couple new subscribers this week. Don't know what all that's about. Haven't done anything to warrant that, but I appreciate you so much. Thank you and all that sappy stuff. And to anyone that came because they saw, like, my three seen hair videos um that's not what this channel is and you're gonna be disappointed all right i am audi 5000 i love you guys as always have fun be safe lick both ways before you cross the street and i will see you next monday bye